As I've stated before, when I watch TV and film, I can't help but wonder about the minor characters. Who were these actors and whatever became of them? I'm also a huge fan of Mystery Science Theater 3000. Now, during the show's early days, they showed two films, Manhunt in Space and Crash of the Moons. These were Rocky Jones Space Ranger stories edited from the 1954 TV show. It was one of the only 50s television shows that were shot on film rather than live in the studio on video, which made them perfect for re-editing into features. Anyway, one character that Mystery Science Theater 3000 made fun of was Winky, Rocky Jones' comic sidekick. A quick Google search revealed that he was played by an actor whose name was Scotty Beckett. And Scotty, well, he had issues. It didn't end well. Today I have the sad story of an actor who just couldn't get his life together. Well, hello there, Old Man Kelly here, Jeff to my friends, and you can call me Jeff. So, Scotty Beckett's career started at a very young age. This California kid was born on October 4th, 1929 in Oakland, and was discovered when he was entertaining his father, who was in the hospital, by singing to him in Pig Latin. The nurses noticed and took him around to entertain other patients, and a star was born because this led to the four-year-old being discovered by a studio casting director who got him an uncredited part in the 1933 film Gallant Lady alongside Dickie Moore. This led to a part in the R Gang shorts, the later years of the Little Rascals. He played Scotty. He also continued to get roles in films including Whom the Gods Destroy, and for a while it looked like he was going to have this great acting career. He got good roles in such films as Dante's Inferno, Anthony's Adverse, The Charge of the Light Brigade, Conquest, Marie Antoinette, Ellie Baba and the Forty Thieves, and King's Row. This is quite a resume for a kid who wasn't even old enough to shave yet. And I wonder if it had something to do with his later problems. Anyway, when he was 18, things began to slip. He signed a contract with MGM in 1947, but the roles he was being offered were, well, getting smaller and smaller. While attending the University of Southern California, the teenager attempted to continue his acting career both on the stage and in films, but the pressure got a bit too much for him. On December 20th, 1948, he was behind the wheel when he made a wild turn onto Sunset Boulevard. He was seen veering over the center line, and then he crashed into another car. At one point, allegedly, he tried to get away from police, saying, I want to go home. I don't want to go to jail. Scotty, unfortunately, got behind the wheel after drinking a lot of bourbon at a frat party, and he was fined $150. Over the next few years, he continued to get roles in films and seemed to be making that transition into an adult actor. Life must have been good. He was a handsome young man who was going to college and acting in Hollywood. Their future must have been also bright, and then he fell in love. I assume it was love because the 20-year-old eloped with tennis star Beverly Baker in 1949. The two were married in Las Vegas. And on the surface, they seem to be an adorable young couple, but things are not always what they seem. Just four short months after they were married, Beverly sued Scotty for divorce. She listed mental cruelty and bodily injury for their separation. She reported that he was insolent, arrogant, abusive, belligerent, and jealous. A judge ordered that Scotty pay her $225 a month for alimony. By the end of that year, the ex-wife was engaged to another tennis star, and Scotty was getting ready to marry a, another Hollywood actor, Beverly J. Vickers, who acted under the name Sonny Vickers. The two were secretly married in Mexico. Sonny's biggest film was one called A Yank in Korea from 1951. Actually, she didn't really have that much of an acting career. And from what I read, she suffered from alcoholism, which may be why she and Scotty got along so well together. The couple had a son, Scott Jr., and I think maybe, just maybe, Scotty had learned something from his first marriage and was going to make this one work. What he didn't learn was not to drive drunk. 
the same year as his marriage, the same year as the birth of his son, Scotty was seen driving at night without lights, hitting a curb and then another car. He was intoxicated and got arrested again. But by 1953, things were looking up. He was signed to be in a new MGM TV space show called Rocky Jones Space Ranger. The young star now had a beautiful wife, a newborn son, and was starring in a revolutionary new TV show. So all was right with the world, right? Not so much. A strange incident occurred on February 25, 1954. A man walked into the Cavalier Hotel on Wilshire Boulevard, pointed a gun at a hotel clerk, and stole $137. The robber then struck the clerk on the head with his gun and left a note saying, don't call police for 10 minutes. In the morning at around 7.15 a.m., Scotty Beckett was found asleep in the basement shower room of the Cavalier Hotel. He had a gun in his possession and, according to the paper, $147 in his pocket. He claimed to have no idea how he got there as he had been drinking heavy the night before. He didn't even remember where he had parked his car. Scotty was arrested on suspicion of robbery. He denied the charges, telling police that he now earned $500 a week, so he didn't need, need the money. The clerk, who required four stitches, could not positively identify Scotty. He said, he does not look like the man. He was released on bail and apparently just took off. On March 30th, 1954, a warrant had been issued for Scotty's arrest. According to the paper, Scotty, his wife, and three-year-old son skipped bail and ran off to Mexico. Now, if I understand this correctly, three merchants had complained about bad checks that were written for a bank that didn't exist in San Francisco. When the police went to the hotel to question the family, who were registered under the name Mr. and Mrs. Sean Bullock, they saw Scotty trying to sneak out the back door. When authorities ordered him to stop, a gunfight ensued. 20 shots were fired. No one was hurt, and Scotty, his wife, and child managed to make it to the car, but 25 miles away, they had a flat tire, and that's where they were arrested. He was imprisoned for four months in a Mexican jail with his wife and daughter before he agreed for extradition back to the United States. An organization called Motion Picture Mothers began to raise funds to help square his Mexican bad check debt. Scotty had already filmed 26 episodes of Rocky Jones, but was replaced by an actor named Jimmy Lydon. The show was soon canceled. A side note here, Jimmy Lydon, who starred with Scotty in a couple of Gasoline Alley films, said this of Scotty. Well, Scotty Beckett was a very bad young man. First of all, he was a very bad loser. And then he went on to say, I don't mean to bum rap a guy who's dead, but I don't mind with Scotty. Yeah, he wasn't a big fan of Scotty Beckett. Now, strangely, Scotty was only charged with felony knife possession. All other charges were dropped, including the robbery. I'm guessing he didn't get charged with the shootout because that happened in Mexico, maybe, I don't know. Anyway, he pleaded guilty. After all the trouble he caused, he was only fined $200 and put on probation. Probation included a ban on drinking alcoholic beverages and going to places that serve alcoholic beverages. After he was released, he planned to get his acting career going again. He said, I hope to pick up the pieces. But by December, he was arrested again for writing bad checks. Don't you just want to go back in time, grab somebody, slap them in the face, and say, get your life together, man? Over the next few years, he only got a few small roles in TV. He had pretty much given up on acting. Other career paths he tried were to sell real estate, then selling cars, and twice enrolled at universities with the intention of becoming a medical doctor. By 1957, the 27-year-old was again in the news. He was arrested at the Mexican border on drug charges. He said the drugs had been prescribed for his wife by a Mexican physician. He had more than 250 stimulant capsules on his possession. But he told reporters, I am not in trouble. By August of 1957, Beverly Jane Beckett, the actress known as Sonny Vickers, filed for divorce. But in an odd turn, it was Scotty who was seeking custody of their five-year-old boy. He said that she should have limited visits only, and only when she's not under the influence of alcohol. 
Odd because in September of 1957, Scotty was taken to the hospital after an overdose of drugs and what many thought was a suicide attempt. He was seriously ill in a coma caused by narcotics or sleeping pills. Though newspaper stories seemed to vary at the time of what was the cause and how severe he actually was. But he was up and about in a few days. In 1959, he crashed his car into a tree, resulting in a broken hip and fractured skull. Yes, he was drunk again. And this time in court, he began to act wild, ripping off his clothes and I don't know. In 61, he was married again, this time to a woman named Margaret Sabo, who had a teenage daughter named Susan. Now, Scotty could be a violent person, and no one was safe when they were around him, including himself. According to the Ventura County Free Press, he hit himself in the head with a vase. After that, he locked his 70-year-old mother out of the house and was eventually arrested. He was also arrested for attacking a neighbor with a knife. Now, Margaret sued for divorce in 63, saying that Scotty gave her very little love and attention. Sometime later, her 14-year-old daughter dropped by to pick up some clothes, and he struck her with a crutch. It resulted in another arrest. Then there was a suicide attempt and psychiatric examination, and finally, after being sentenced to 180 days in a county jail, he said, I'm never going to drink again. About time there, Scotty. Over the next few years, he seemed to have stayed out of trouble, but then in May of 1968, he staggered into the Royal Palms Hotel, a Hollywood nursing home. He had been severely beaten in what many think was a drug deal gone bad. Six days later, he was dead, apparently from either an overdose of alcohol or barbiturates or both. It is believed to have been another suicide attempt, his third, and this time he got it right. There's a story that he left behind a partially written suicide note, but if so, it's never been made public. Scotty Beckett was only 38 years old. On top of that, his second wife, Sonny Vickers, died six months later. Whether her alcoholism had anything to do with this, I can't say. I couldn't find any information about her death, but she was only 40 years old. You know, I can't help but think of this whole nature versus nurture thing. Was Scotty just a troubled person from the start? Would he have gotten into the same situation even if he didn't become a big star? Or were his problems because of the way he was raised? Too much success too early? Who knows? I can't help but think that what happens to a person in their preteen years does affect them for the rest of their lives, but I don't know. I'm not an expert. Anyway. Thanks for watching my video. I appreciate it. If you can do all the usual stuff, like, subscribe, blah, blah. Just don't hit that thumbs down button. Do me that favor. Okay, thanks very much. I'll be back soon, hopefully, with something really exciting. Bye.